Hi, you're with Chandeep and Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about that. How do you improve the look and feel of the tables and the matrix that you create inside of Power BI? Now, tables and the matrix also happen to be one of the most commonly used visuals. Let's just see that. How can we make them a whole lot better? All right. So I'm actually going to divide this video into two parts. Part number one is the beauty part of it. We'll take a look at different formatting changes that you can apply to your tables or matrix to make it feel and look a whole lot better. Then the second part is the brains part of it. We'll take a look at the tables from an analytical perspective and make changes to it and add a few conditions to it to make it analytically a whole lot better so that it delivers very impressive insights. Let's just get started. All right, I'm in a Power BI file and I have some data here with some measures created. Let's just start to create a very simple matrix and let's just take it from there. So I'm actually going to hop over to the visualizations pane here and pick up a matrix to begin with and a blank matrix gets inserted onto my screen. I'm actually going to drop the year and the calendar quarter here. So in my calendar table, which is my date table, I'm just going to take the year, put it in the rows and take the quarter and then again put it into the rows. And now I'm actually also going to take my total sales and of course also add my units and maybe from the products table, let's just also add the subcategory of the product. So I'm actually going to add the subcategory of the product in my rows and that actually completes my pivot table that I actually want to take a look at. Now, but by default, if you have been creating matrix and uh, table visualization, this is uh, how a default matrix is going to look like. Now let's just start to make changes in this matrix that has been created by default and start to make it a look a whole lot better by applying some formatting changes first. All right, so what I've done is I've created two pivot tables, one on the left, the other one is on the right. Both are just copies of one another. And the reason why I've done that, I'm actually going to start formatting the one which is kept on the left hand side. And then eventually once I have done all the formatting, I'll compare this pivot table with the unformatted or the default pivot table that I got and see that if the changes that I have made has made the pivot table a whole lot better or not. The first thing that I almost always do when I create a pivot table is increase the padding of every single row. Padding is like every single row is saying, give me more space of my own. So all that I do is I click on the pivot table. Then I go over to the uh, format panel right here in the format. There is something called as grid in the grid. I will find an option called padding. Alternatively, if I can just also go in the search panel here and I can just start writing padding and it's going to show up the padding right here and I can just increase the padding. So you can decide how much padding do you want against every single row. I generally tend to go for five or six as the padding number. So let's just make it as six and every single row is more spaced out now. All right. The other thing that I almost always again do with my pivot tables or the matrix that I create inside of Power BI is that I try to go for the classic layout. So remember that if you're trying to work with Excel, almost everybody prefers to choose the classic layout over the standard compact layout. It just creates everything into a separate column of its own. That is also possible in Power BI, but the word, the name, nomenclature of naming that is not classic layout. It's called stepping. So if you actually click on the pivot table, you go over to the format panel again and then start searching for the word step and you would find that the step is on or stepped layout is turned on. If you actually turn it off, it actually becomes the classic layout which we prefer inside of our Excel. So I turn it off and it actually becomes the layout that we want. So year in the separate column of its own, quarter has a separate column of its own and the subcategory and we have total sales and then total units. All right, the other thing that I normally also do inside of the matrix or the pivot table is that I try to remove the default style of the pivot table that gets created automatically. Here is what I mean. So once you actually create this particular matrix, you can actually go to the format panel here and take a look at the style that got created. By default, it's a default style. In a default style, you will typically have one row colored and the other row as white. So you can see a white row and then the colored row and you will then have that pattern repeated throughout the pivot table. It might just give it a flavor, but I think that it's a bit of a noise for the pivot table and I generally do not want to have that. So I particularly go for a minimal layout. That is the third one here. And that's the minimal layout. That's how it looks like. Now, obviously, as soon as I picked up the minimal layout, everything was set in my pivot table according to the minimal layout, including the padding that I changed to six. So I'm just going to maybe go back here in the search panel again and change the padding to once again as six. All right. And my pivot table starts to breathe once again, and every row is clearly spaced out. Another thing that I typically deal with in my pivot table or my matrix or my tables is that I deal with the subtotal, especially when I'm trying to build drill down. So if year gets drilled down to the quarter, quarter gets drilled down to the subcategory at every single drill down, you will find an individual subtotal of that particular item. Now I generally don't 
tend to have that many subtotals. I will just keep it for the relevant items and remove the rest. How do you do that? I'm actually going to click on the pivot table, the matrix here, and click on the format panel here. I'm actually going to roll over to the subtotals. In the subtotals, I'll first have to tell this option that I'd like to manually decide that where do I want the subtotal or not. And that option is the per row level, activate that. And it gives you the uh, option to activate that or deactivate the subtotals for year, quarter or the subcategory. For now, I just want the subtotal for maybe uh, only the quarters. So I'll just delete that, remove that and remove the subtotal for the year as well and only have the subtotals for the quarter and my pivot table starts to look a little better as well. The other thing is dealing with the plus or minus signs that appear to allow the user to drill down or to come one level up. You can see that at every single level here I have a plus minus sign to expand the particular field item or to contract it. If you don't really want the user to have access to these you can actually turn them off. It entirely depends upon you how do you prefer your table to look like but I generally tend to turn them off because I don't want the clutter to just lay around here unless I actually do not want the user not to expand the particular pivot table. So I actually click on the pivot table here. I'm actually going to go over to the format here and just write a plus sign here to be able to track that item. I write a plus sign. I get the plus minus icons which are currently turned on. I'm just going to turn that off and that item actually goes off from my table. Another item that pisses me off a lot is when the pivot table or the matrix automatically changes the width of the column as soon as you add or delete a particular column. Now let's just say that we have the total units as well as the sales right here in my matrix here. And let's just say that I drag a particular item or a delete one particular item from the table. The column width will automatically contract or expand. I don't really like that if I've set one particular column width, I want it to be the same. What I can actually do is I can set the width of the column. So let's just say that I want the year to be this one the quarter to be the same width as the year so maybe just the same thing as year maybe I just want the category to be this wide and the total sales and the total units will nearly be of the same size the total sales and then the total units nearly of the same size now once I have set the width for every single column here I can just turn the auto width option as off so I just select the pivot table go over to the format once again and I can just say auto maybe just shows up so you can see that auto size column width I can just turn it off and once you've turned it off it will never really change the size of the column once again now what is going to happen is that if you actually turn off the auto width on and off depending upon what option do you want you might also want to turn on the spilling effect of the pivot table the wrapping effect of the pivot table if any particular value is so big that it's kind of spilling over, you, sh you should actually have the wrapping effect to automatically press enter and that should appear in the second line. So you can just click here on the pivot table and just go over to the formatting here and just start typing something like a wrap here and you will get the option to wrap and you can see that as of now in my values word wrap is on in my row headers word wrap is on in my column headers word wrap is on if any text becomes large enough that it's not fitting in it is automatically going to press enter and wrap it into the next line that's good all right once you've done all of these formatting changes that i just spoke about you can see that our pivot table starts to look a lot more cleaner and neater uh, as compared to the standard pivot table that got created now let's just say that you have many tables or matrix that you have to create inside of your Power BI. Doing all of these changes that we just did on one single table individually on every single table is going to be a lot of work. So what you can do is you can apply the small trick to copy all the formatting of one pivot table or the matrix and apply it to the other pivot table using the format painter option. So I click on the pivot table that I have which is the matrix and I just click on the format painter and I click on the format painter and I copy that formatting and then I just click on the other uh, matrix that I have and all the formatting that I just did to one pivot table gets applied on the second pivot table. But I'm actually going to revert this back to the one that we had initially because eventually I want to compare that how does my final pivot table look like versus the one that got created by default. So I'm just going to press Z and move from here on. The last formatting trick that I would like to talk about is the size of the values inside of the pivot table. So if you think that your pivot table is too small to read on the screen, perhaps you can also increase the size of the entire pivot table. Click on the pivot table or the matrix here, uh, just go over to the format panel here and just type the word size. And once you do that, you're actually going to come inside of three places, the grid, the column headers and the row headers. If you change the size inside of the grid, the entire pivot table takes the effect of that. So don't make the mistake of individually 
actually change the column headers or the row headers just make the change in the grid and the entire pivot table is going to make change of that unless you specifically want the row headers to be bigger or the column headers to be bigger you don't really want to go and fiddle with these items so i'm actually mm -hmm. going to make the size as one point higher so maybe make it 11 and the pivot table starts to appear a little better so you can make the change as per the way that you would want to show it all right, we're done with part number one, which was the beauty part of it. Let's just talk about the brains part of it. Now, let's just take a look at a few analytical changes that I tend to do in my pivot tables and visuals so that they start to deliver more interesting insights than the regular measures that you see, which is total sales and units. One of the things that I really like about Power BI just in general is the ability to do conditional formatting. And you can do conditional formatting in two ways. You can write sophisticated DAX to do dynamic conditional formatting, but the standard conditional formatting features are also good enough. What I will as of now apply is the data bars feature on the total sales and the total units column so that they start to display these small charts which can fit inside a small cell that will give the relative value to one another. So I will select my table right here. I will go to total sales and the total sales value here I'm just going to apply conditional formatting and apply it on data bars. Once I actually do that in the positive bar I'm just going to select the color as a gray color. Now I can also apply a very dark color maybe blue yellow red but it tends to make my pivot table look very busy and cluttered if the color is very very dark. So I tend to go for very light colors that just display and give a hint of the bar that has been created. I'm actually going to press OK and there's a small bar that has been created in the pivot table which not only gives me the insight that this value was relatively very large as compared to the entire year but also it looks cleaner and neat on the entire pivot table. The additional analytical tweak that I almost always make to my pivot tables is by adding some interesting measures that calculate a particular benchmark or an interesting KPI to my pivot tables. Now you can see that total sales and total units is a pretty standard calculation. So I have also added some conditional formatting on top of that, but it will be nice to compare my total sales against a particular benchmark if I have any. And to do that, I have written a very simple KPI measure right here. And I'm just saying that the sales should not be blank and the sales, if they are less than $10,000, then give me a cross. Maybe that's the benchmark that I'd like to compare every single quarter and the product category of sales. So if I just drag that measure to my pivot table it actually gives me these cross signs here wherever the sales do not meet the particular criteria you can see that I have a cross mark wherever it doesn't mean now you just have to be generally very careful with these icons that I have used here if you start to use them in bulk and just place them all around your pivot table your pivot table again starts to look very busy and cluttered all right the last analytical trick that I have is adding DAX calculations that calculate something like a text value or a note that just generally enhances the messageability and the insights of your table. So take a look at this entire table, maybe in the subcategory of caps and all of these subcategories that I have, I'd like to know which was the best selling product. And I've written a very smart measure here, which actually goes ahead and takes a look at the particular category and not only finds the name of the product, which is actually a text, but also tells me what was the sale of that particular product in that category in that year. If I actually drag that particular calculation to my pivot table, I actually get a text message and stating that what was the best selling product in that particular category in that quarter in that year. Now that generally enhances the not only the look and feel of my pivot table, but also the general messageability that I'm actually delivering with that pivot table. Obviously, if you'd like to learn about the best selling SKU and the sales measure that I have written here, I'm just going to actually link to a series of video series that I have done, especially to talk about that. How can you find the best selling product and its individual sales that you can actually take a look at and get through the entire process. All right, these were a few tips and tricks to make your pivot tables not only just look better, but also to format them in such a way that they look more analytical and deliver more intelligent insights. Take a look at the pivot tables that we have created. This is the one that we have formatted all the way along in this video. And this was the standard generic pivot table that just got created. I'm sure you'll understand the difference and hopefully you will make your pivot tables look a whole lot better. If you have any questions around this, please feel free to put them down in the comment and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, a quick shout out about my DAX and my Power Query courses. If you're trying to learn DAX or Power Query right from scratch and build up your level so that you start solving more challenging and more sophisticated problems of your own data, I will highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be highly beneficial. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye.